Hey, here we go. Check this out. This is Whole Nother Level with Dwayne Lindo. You know, frankly, I, I, I feel that we shouldn't even be talking about this. Simple as that. The great L. Bushman. They have to make so many adjustments, but I don't know what they have to do. They need a mirror. They need a mirror? Frank Mize. Did they win the offseason in free agency? Yes. What does that mean? Absolutely nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Craig Cousins. How can you not put Tom Brady number one on the Mount Rushmore quarterbacks? Man, this guy's a legend. Ring speak. And Eric Wilson. I didn't know Eric was going to let you talk. Don't hate the player, hate the game. I've seen enough Facebook posts to know that you're not a Giants fan. <laughs> Let's go. everyone to another edition of Whole Another Level right here at Co-Work Florida. This is your man Eric Wilson. I am joined by the great Al Bushman. Craig Cousin will be joining us momentarily along with Frank Mize. Great Al Bushman, how you feeling so far? Well, I just, I have, I have some purple drink with me. Uh-oh. It's, uh, I don't know what it is, but it's like drinking a grape popsicle oh, right now, so. Lord. Uh, hopefully I'm not bouncing uh, too much off the walls. I- I'm sure you probably will be here when we start talking about your, your favorite team in all of Major League Baseball. Oh, yeah. But, ladies and gentlemen, we do this every Tuesday from 6 to 7 p.m. right here at Cowork, Florida. And, as always, the number to chime in is 813-699-5353. So, I know you got my, uh, my, my Facebook message Saturday uh, during the Kentucky Derby because the horse that I picked was actually – It was going to win. It, it looked like it was going to win, man. I was like, can you believe this? 30 to 1 odds. And I was like, why didn't I put money on this? And then all of a sudden – What was uh, crazy about that race was I – didn't, I didn't watch. I'm not really – I'm not really big in the horse racing. I'm not really big in the – I mean, I'll go to the track and play poker instead of play, betting on the dogs. Right, of that course. Better Sarasota Kennel. But <clears throat> the, the horse that a lot of um, – a lot of Vegas odds, a lot of bookies picked to to win. I think it was Always Dreaming or something like that. That was the one that ended up winning. Yeah. And it was like a four to one odds on that one. So if you really, if you bet big, the only way you could really win big is if you, you know, bet it on like horses that were going to place or a, like a trifecta or Quinellas. But, you know, other than that, if, if you really bet on, on Always Dreaming, you weren't really going to win a lot of money. No, you weren't. But, I mean, even Four still. Four to one odds, not so much. Four to one odds, I, I agree. But like I said, I was sitting there, and, and uh, I was over in Orlando, and I'm sitting there watching it, and all of a sudden I, I, I see uh, State of Honor, I think there was a name, at, at 30 to one. I saw this thing coming around the second corner. I was like, wait a minute, 30 to one? I'm like, ah, I got a horse in the race here. What, what, what's going on? And then, and like, two seconds later, always dreaming, probably shot out of nowhere, and it was like, all right, never mind. Were you wearing your uh – did you wear a big ploopy hat? No, no, I did no. not. No, I, I just. Um, I can see you wearing one. You know, I actually, I have a fedora. Like the Indiana, it or not. like the Indiana Jones hat. No, not not as big as that, but I have like a, I have a decent sized fedora that I actually could wear. I can for the see Derby. you maybe taking it too far with a hat, like a zoot suit hat. Oh, I have with a, the, with well, the big feather in it. I have a zoot suit. Okay. I just don't have the hat. You just for don't it. have the hat with the big. feather. No, I used to. I and and that's where actually where my fedora came from. Um, I have a zoot suit, and well, I... Well, you have the zoot suit, but no hat? The hat that I had... Then it's not a zoot suit. Yes, it it's is. It's just a regular suit. No, it is. Believe me. Without the, the hat, it's, it's not a suit. long coat. It's yeah, the... I know what a zoot suit is. Okay, I'm just saying. You, you have to complete with the hat. Zoot suit, Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. 90, was it 97, 98? Gentlemen, what's going on? How are you, Craig? You looking a little little tan still, there, my friend? Still a little I'm burnt. a little tanner than when I was in school. You still a little, But I'm really pale still. A little, bo- little, little lobsterish, a little bit. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Frank, what's up, man? Not much. How are you guys? Uh, I'm good. I'm good. So um, I, I know Craig was out golfing today. Uh, what'd you shoot? Better than 91? <laughs> Probably worse. Are you joking? <laughs> I'm, I'm just asking. Me. I wish. I mean, I've never had lessons in my life, and, uh, you know, my highest is a 95. So I'm going to take it for what it's worth. There was a lot of water on the course and a lot of – So that's what the excuse was? Th- there actually was a lot of water on the course. Okay. Saw some gators. You oh, know. Okay. Well, that's not a shocker since we're <laughs> – 112. <laughs> uh, so, uh, <laughs> was it because of the gators had something to do with that? Uh, you know, I, I, on one hole I was looking in my back. You know, I was, I was like, yeah, is, is, that, is that my shadow? Or is that, uh, yeah, it was pretty much – I shot a 112. Okay. All right. It is what it is. Yeah, a little bit of a breaking news kind of unrelated to horses really? and, 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 right. and right. alligators. The got? Bills have hired Brandon Bean. Brandon Bean as their new GM. Brandon Bean, that's actually pretty big, though, actually, because <clears throat> they were looking for a new GM. So, okay. He and just got hired. a whole new scouting department, too. Yes. 
which the GM is going to have to fill now. Bills be, trying that, to make some moves. Oh, yeah, but, I mean, first off, you're playing in the AFC East. It, you need, basically, Dick LeBeau to walk through that door and take over that defense for starters. No, you need Tom Brady to retire or die. Well, that's not going to happen. Or Not but, right now, well, The dying part, maybe. At some anybody, point, anybody is, can die. That is I, I, terrible. I, I, I'm going to go that on record. That is terrible. Come on now. At some point. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Bill Belichick might have a stroke. Or die. That's that's really bad. Or retire. I was also just anybody on the Bucks could do that. Come I was on. just trying to make them competitive in the division. I wasn't saying they were going to outright yeah. win. I was just trying to make them look at least a little bit formidable in the AFC East. <laughs> I know you were trying to, Eric, but Evan took it to a literally a whole, <laughs> a whole level. other level. <laughs> There's well, a line that I crossed. It was in the morbid section. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, th- that was one of the knocks against the job that GMs they were complaining that whoever gets it is going to have to hire basically. A whole new scouting department, which, I I mean, I kind of get it. It's a new owner, and it's not like that scouting department had been tearing it up the last few years. I mean, Tyrod Taylor, I mean, you look at some of their draft picks. Are you knocking on Tyrod Taylor right now? I am. I'm I'm knocking on their draft picks just basically across the board the last few years. I was Fair uh, enough. I really I, was, I don't think we touched on this last game that they or last time we uh Sammy Watkins they didn't renew his they didn't That's actually pretty crazy option. because he was a first round pick. They gave up know? a lot to get him yeah. to oh, yeah. move up. Yeah. Absolutely. He was supposed they, to be they, they thought he was going to They thought he was going to be the next Julio Jones. Yeah. And uh he has the potential to be, but he hasn't lived up to that expectation due to injury and due those, to other things. Those, yeah. those foot problems, man. Yeah, man and due to quarterback play and uh, injury. Yes. Can't stay healthy. Gotta get them Dr. Scholes for your cleats. Bro. All right, gentlemen, let, let's switch gears here. I want to go to the NBA because we have a very pivotal game five tonight out in the West. And, uh, Frank, I, you know, when it comes to the Spurs, I'm always going to defer to you, my brother. I'm, I'm very simply going to ask the question, being totally unbiased, who wins tonight? I, I picked San Antonio to win this series before it started. And if I could have a do-over, I, I think San Antonio's in trouble. Really? I, I, I do. Okay. I, I, I think Houston can win this series, and probably all, they probably are going to. Say, San Antonio looks, I mean, slower. And I know they've, people have said they've been old. They're getting old, and they've been old for the last few years. But it, it's really showing in some regards. And Kawhi is basically, they have one person. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that San Antonio has going for him is actually a couple of things. Tony Parker got injured, so, you know, Simmons – and also, a couple of the players are trying to fill in for him, but Nene got injured a uh, couple of nights ago. Yep. So Nene's out for the season now, they said, for the Rockets. So that could actually help in the interior. Maybe they should start, you know, San Antonio needs to start feeding LaMarcus Aldridge, Paul Gasol in the interior. Uh, Patty Mills has been, been playing pretty pretty well. Yeah, he, he's so a good. I, yeah, I actually think San Antonio is going to pull it out. I think if Nene didn't get injured, then I, w- I would give the edge to Houston. But I think it's going to go seven games regardless. I still yeah. think it's going to go seven games. I, I do too. Um, you know, just because of the fact that Houston lives and die They literally live and die by the three-pointer. Whether it be Harden, Lou Williams, Trevor Ariza, everybody's shooting threes over in Houston. And it's only going to be basically taken to another level because of the Nene injury. Yeah. They can't go inside like they used to because they would give it to him inside. He could score. It, the games that San Antonio has won, it's felt like they had to scratch and claw yeah. and just barely win. The games that Houston's won, it, it's like, you know, they're just running away with it. Yeah, the NBA has been a, a pretty weird, you know, postseason per se. Yep. Even wa- – I mean, let's be honest. Like, Golden State, they swept. Yep. Cleveland has swept. Yep. Boston, they won their first two games, but they, they were down 15, 20 points at one point in both those games, came back and won. The next two games have been complete blowouts. Washington has really taken them to the fence. Yeah. They're 2-2, two and two, but it, it almost seems like Washington almost could have swept. So, I, yeah. I mean, it, I'm a Boston fan, everybody that listens on the normal, but unless we really – if it's coaching, if it's players, unless someone really steps up, Washington has the edge in this series now. They've showed me that they have the edge. But the, the the problem is is that you know Cleveland hasn't lost, Golden State hasn't lost, and then to your your point there, I mean it's almost like okay, who's going to be first to lose the Golden State? Is it going to be the San Antonio Spurs? Is it going to be Houston or do Frank or you know Evan, Eric? Do you guys see one of these two teams actually contending and facing Golden State and giving them a run six seven games? You know, unfortunately, the San Antonio Spurs are not the San Antonio Spurs of last year, and, and we see that clearly. Um, we thought that Kawhi Leonard and uh, 
Right. Well, the, the Lamarcus, Ald- Lamar- Lamarcus Allers, that, thank that you. signing has not lived up to, I think, what they thought they were getting, basically, when they made that deal for him. Well, he looks old and slow, but and then, and then there's games that he can put it all together and like, like oh, yeah, wow, yeah. this is the guy that we got. And so it's kind, of, it's kind of a weird dynamic. I just, unfortunately, right now, if you ask me, I'm going to have to I, – I was with you, Frank. I was on board as saying I see San Antonio getting back to the Western Conference Finals and facing Golden State. But unless something happens tonight and then again on um, you know Thursday and then again on Sunday, should they have to go to a Game 7, unless we see the, the Greg Popovich San Antonio Spurs that we're known and accustomed to seeing, I unfortunately am going to jump ship on this right now and say I am going to give that edge to James Harden and to the Houston Rockets. Un- and, and that's a hard pill for me to swallow because I've never been a Rockets fan and this goes back way, way back to Elijah Wan. I've, yeah. I've, I've just not been a fan. But looking at this from a whole and, and being totally unbiased with you, I think Houston has the edge in this. Now, flipping uh, over to the, to the eastern side, uh, I said Washington in six. And, you know, they're holding to it right now. I really feel like the Washington Wizards, and I'll take a line from Frank, they match up right now the best against Cleveland. I, I think that Washington is a more talented team if you look at their roster. I think Boston is here basically solely on coaching. I, I, I mean, I, I'm not saying they don't have any talent, but Brad Stevens has shown the importance of what coaching can do with some of his pick and rolls and matchups and plays that he's running. Because I, I think, you know, just again, from a talent standpoint, I think Washington is a more talented team. I still have Boston winning. And on the West, I think Houston has a better shot against Golden State than San Antonio does just because they kind of both are jump shooting teams and Houston can put up points. Well, it's interesting that you say that because they're basically the same team, almost mirror images, except Golden State has a better squad. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So, like, they both like to get out quick, you know, from whether it be rebound or post, whatever. They have to get out quick. Jack you know, them up. <laughs> push the ball and jack them up exactly what you just said. The problem is, is, you know, when you have Steph, Clay, Kevin Durant, you kind of jack it up a little bit better. You know, Harden can fit that mold for Houston, but then you go with Trevor Reese and Lou Williams. Yeah, they can do it in spurts. The other team does it on a consistent basis. basis. So, you know, that, that's going to be interesting. But I, I like what you say. I kind of like the Spurs to try to slow them down a little bit and yeah. try to switch the game up. That's why I kind of like them a little bit better. But losing Tony Parker – you know, I'm not too sure what's going on that day. It's going to go seven games, I think, too. I, yeah. The crazy thing is I think two games are go- two of the series are going to go seven games. You know, in Boston, I've been, I've been saying this. I said this al- along with Bushman before the series started. They're such a Jekyll and Hyde team. You know, they can win a series. They can lose a series in the, in the blink of an eye, basically. They're, they're a player or two away. The fact yeah. that they're here right now and playing as well as they've been playing. IT, 53 points the other night, playing great. I mean, they need Gordon Haywood. They need Jimmy Butler. They need to draft a Marco Fultz or a ball. They need a little bit more. But the fact that they're here, everybody playing as a team, you know, kudos to them. As of right now, I'm looking at it. I still have Washington win this series against Boston. No offense to your Celtics, right? No, I'm, I'm – <clears throat> They are. No offense taken. I mean, because we said this before. You picked the – you thought the Bulls had a good chance to take them they out. Did, you know and what? they were up 2-0 before and, Rondo got injured. And if Rondo didn't yeah. get hurt, I think the Bulls probably would have swept the so Celtics. It's, it's a, I mean, I don't think they would have swept them, but I think, you know, they had a good chance to beat them, though. Yeah, I want to ask you guys, right. uh, out of any – the winner of both these series, when, uh, you know, the winner out of the San Antonio-Houston uh, series, whoever plays has to play Golden State. Do you see them maybe bringing it – maybe winning a couple games or just flat out getting swept? I'm going to well, say if San Antonio finds a way to win this series, I say they get swept by Golden State. Okay. Uh, if Houston wins this series – which right now I'm kind of jumping on that fence, jumping on that bandwagon. I'll say Houston maybe pulls a game, maybe two games. It might go to six. I don't see Houston taking Golden State to game seven. I really don't. I'm going to say one to two games from either team. However, with a an asterisk of if Steve Kerr is not back for the Western Conference Finals and the, the Warriors play the Spurs, I give San Antonio a decent shot because then – Look, I, I, not Mike Brown is basically filling in. I'm not saying that he's a horrible coach, but 
Popovich, if I had to choose between. I think LeBron's waiting for him on the finals. Just so he can be like, hey, Mike Brown, you actually helped me a little bit. Popovich, Mike Brown, I'm rolling with Pop to, you know, just to come up with some stuff that maybe it's going to take Mike Brown a game or two to be like, oh, so that's what he's doing over there. Now I'll make an adjustment. So, but. I think I think either if you look at the East or the West, both the teams, either the Spurs, Rockets, Celtics, or Wizards, both of them are going to get two games from the winner. I think that because I think they're pretty solidly put together teams, and they're all well coached. And I and I really think that you know, there's no, I I don't see like a a, a four one. I see more of a okay, a couple of a couple of games that get got when they need to get got at a time where everybody's fighting. So I think. Obviously, I think Cleveland and Golden State will advance, but I think either it be the Spurs, Rockets, Celtics, uh, Wizards, both of them get two games. So I think both series ends in 4-2. to two. Can we just start the finals? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I mean, mean, but we've been I, saying this before the I, season I, started. I, I, I know. Let's just, let's just bypass everything. And Mike, Mike D'Antoni... Co NBA Coach of the Year. He should have been. A, he should have been regular Coach of the I, Year. I, I agree. I mean, the I, fact I, that, like, okay, wait, hold on. When did they started putting that in? Well, I think it's the ridiculous. And a 500 the record too. Eric Spolstra. Eric is- Spolstra got his team to guess what? Uh, about about two and fifteen to start the season. Oh, he pulled his way out of it. So then he gets coach of the year. Forty one and absolutely 41? ridiculous. That that I mean, look, Mike D'Antoni. I have no problem with that because if anybody at the beginning of the season would have said. Houston's going to be a three seed with under Mike D'Antoni. I'd have been like, uh, yeah, no, 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 no. How much so, money you want to put on that? So, <laughs> all, all, exactly. So, all credit in the world. I have no problem with Mike D'Antoni being coach of the year. If you were, if you had to do a co, I mean, anybody. I mean, Pop, Brad Stevens, even Scott Brooks of Washington. I mean, somebody that at least you could look at it and mm-hmm. be like, well, they had a good record. They, you know, they. Something they finished first in the East. Billy Donovan, Regardless of whether they're great or not, they finished first in the East with basically one superstar and a bunch of good, good, really good players that they, you know, very well coached. And that's what the coach of the year is supposed to be. Not someone that you starts can't. two and 15 and then, they, oh, they pulled their way to like basically 500. Yeah, you had a good season. You had a good like one third, a half of the season. But I, come on. I'm not saying he didn't do a good job. I mean, you know, he, it's not like Miami has a ton of talent, but you can't not make the playoffs. The Jazz, the jazz the who, who coaches the Jazz? Quinn I'm, Snyder. Exactly. Yeah. Great season. I would have been okay with that either. Yeah. Yep. Well, I mean, unfortunately, we are not on the collective panel that makes this decision. Should we ever get to that level? Who do you think? Who do you think, Eric? Listen, I am against co MVPs all the way around. I've I, I never believe been, it too. Yeah. yeah. I've never been a co MVP fan. It's not called. The co most value. It's called the most valuable player, and so that's why when we were talking weeks ago about whether it should be Westbrook or whether it should be James Harden, I was like, no, 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 no. There needs to be one or the other, one, one or the other. And this one, the reason why I haven't chimed in on this is because I'm still just it hasn't reality hasn't set into me that as as you guys have said, how do you start the season two and fifteen and win? Co-coach of the, I, oh, because you brought your team back you know to why? relevance. Yeah, but, but five hundred. You, you should get a participant uh, participation. It's, it's like yes. Highlander. There can only be <laughs> one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, uh, baseball's done it. Joe Girardi was manager of the year with the Marlins and had a losing record. And that that listen, still, it's been done in other sports. Yep. I think no, Pey- Peyton Manning and Steve McNair. I think won co MVPs. Yep. That was actually warranted that season, I believe. I still but, say no. I mean, no. Nope. Regardless, this is a joke. This is, if they would have gave it to Harden and Westbrook, I would have less of a joke than they gave it to Dan Tony and Eric Spolstra. Come on, five hundred. No, I, you get coach I, of the year. You could be mediocre. Congratulations, you you made it to literally, literally, you made it to medio- mediocrity. You, Come on, you couldn't make the playoffs in the East. I mean, I'm saying that look, the East has gotten. Better. You don't have to to make coach of the year. <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> Gentlemen, Chris, let's start the show. Let's take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk more, of course, about the NBA. <laughs> We might even throw in a little UFC because apparently this huge card is coming up this Saturday, two eleven oh, yes. in Jerry World of all. No, no, I'm sorry, it's not in Jerry World yet. Yeah, no, it, it's in Dallas. But it's, it's in Dallas. Not, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's yeah. not in Jerry World. We'll get to that, and then of course, the great L. Bushman's got a lot to say about his favorite team in all of Major League Baseball. You are listening to us, Home on Level. We are on Spreaker.com. You can check us out on Raw Talk Online, and as always, check us out replay on the website. WWWHNL. Here we go, yo. Here we go, yo. So what, so what, so what's the scenario? Here we go, yo. Here we go, yo. 
and welcome back to Whole Nother Level right here in Coward, Florida. We got Craig Cousin, Frank Fusay, Great Up Bushman, and your man Eric Wilson in the building. All right, gentlemen, so I want to switch and move to UFC because this is probably one of the largest cards, I think, ever in UFC history, UFC 211, at the American Airlines Arena in Dallas, Texas. It's time! This Mark, Saturday. Mark Cuban getting some money. Yeah, he is, baby. <laughs> So, Frank, you are our he UFC expert. Uh, we tried to get Zach on board with us, but, you know, he's got things going on. So I just want to run over some of these cards with you, my brother. I want to get your thought and opinion on them and, and, and give me a winner if you can. All right. Yep, so let's sure. start with uh, Eddie Alvarez versus uh, Dustin Poirier. Poirier. Thank you. You know my, I'm bad with names. This one is going to be interesting because basically the last time we saw Eddie Alvarez in the ring, he was basically getting just beat down by Connor, just completely, you know, with the, what's the word, uh, murked, basically. Okay. Um, so for, for like just, you know, a couple of seconds, uh, he's got to really come back, and I'm assuming that he's going to because he admitted that his performance was basically garbage. Um, Dustin Poirier has been on a tear in, in that division, and he, he's dangerous, and I, actually I like him – to win the fight, um, keeping it standing. Uh, I think Eddie basically should get the, should try and get this fight to the ground, just like he should have tried to get Conor McGregor to the ground, and then he kept getting lit up and was like, "Oh, damn, this guy can hit." Um, <laughs> but I, I like Dustin. Just he's got he's got the momentum, and he's a nasty striker. All right, let's... twenty-one and five against what twenty-eight and five. So you know, someone has a little bit more wins, a little bit more age under them. But I think the young buck might take it. Eddie's been in. I, I mean, Eddie's still, to me, a, D, a great fighter. But he's been in, coming from Bellator, he's been, just been in battles. And, he has. So, so, uh, so he has experience. Yes. But will the experience, you know, uh, up, up against an up-and-comer that really wants it hungry. Yeah. This is a great fight, actually, I think. Yeah, and Dustin's moved up in weight. And since be, moving up. You know, he doesn't have that weight cut. You know, that, that hurts I know a lot saying. of guys. Yeah, yeah, they it get, really does. They get more strength. You're a little more hydrated. You got more power. I mean, we've seen other guys do it too, move up and, and get better. So, and he's one of them. So, I, I like Do you him. think something by knockout or do you think it's going to go to the decision? I, I think it – I don't think it goes decision. I, I think Dustin Poirier tags him. Wow, okay. All right. Let's go on to the next one here. I'm Frank just gonna, in the house. I'm gonna, I'm Calling gonna, it. If, tags him. I'm okay. Gonna, I'm going to move up the card here a little bit. Why don't we do uh, – Henry versus Sergio. All right, we can do that. Hen yeah. Henry Cejudo is an Olympic caliber wrestler, basically. So if, if, he can, if he can get this to the ground, that's exactly what he wants to do. Because get him in the clinch. Because Sergio's been, he's been on a tear himself. He, he's put together a nice win streak in that division. And he's, uh, with a win over Henry, he might put himself in line for a title shot against uh, Mighty Mouse. Uh, which, you know, basically... He'd just be the lamb to the slaughter because, you know, Mighty Mouse has won like his last 11 fights in that division and just basically is wearing everybody out that, that gets their shot. But I think he's at least, with a win over Henry Cejudo, that he puts himself in line for a title shot. Um, yeah, I, this is a tough one. Uh, I like Sergio. He, he's been on a win streak, and Henry is, I don't call him a one-trick pony because his one trick is really, really good. But I think Sergio is the more well-rounded fighter, and I, I think he wins it. I, I don't see any knock – there's not usually knockouts in that division because they're 125 pounds. So not too many guys have the knockout power. Um, so you're other, in, other so, than Mighty So they're House. in your division then, huh, Frank? <laughs> the basic, ah. <laughs> basic, actually, actually, I weigh uh, – well, yeah, just a, a few pounds more. Um, but, yeah, I, I like Sergio to win the fight uh, by decision. I, I don't think – I don't see a knockout or anything. Um I think Sergio wins it. But Pretty competitive, Henry, okay. But, but you yeah. said if Henry takes it to the ground, though. That's, yes. And, and look, that's a big if in, you could say that in any fight, like the, the Jacare-Robert Whitaker fight. If, if Jacare could get him on the ground, then, you know, and do something, then he might win. But it didn't happen. So, that, you know, that's, that should be his strategy. Henry Cejudo should want to get this fight in the clinch and knee him and basically get him to the ground and ground and pound him out. Um I just I don't see it happening. I, I think Sergio is again more well-rounded of a fighter. Uh, and look, he trains. I mean, at one of the be at one of the better camps. And his brother is uh, Antonio Pettis. So I mean, you know, he's got great people around him to train with for this fight. Um, and he's been on a streak. I believe he's like five and one in his last six. I want to say or four and one in his last five. I, I like Sergio by decision. All right. 
Let's go to Frankie Edgar versus uh, Yari Rodriguez. This is the yep. fight I, I want to see is, the most. This okay. is the fight I want to see the most. All right. So. Yair Rodriguez asked for this fight. He, he, wanted, he wanted Frankie Edgar because he wants a, he wants a name. And Fr- Frankie Edgar is a, is a name. Oh, yeah. Um, what's going to be interesting is Frankie's a boxer, and he has a boxing style for MMA, which is kind of what BJ does. Only Frankie's better at it and younger, but it's going to be a lot similar. You know, Frankie's just a better version of BJ when it comes to boxing and with his footwork. So that that's what's going to be interesting to see. And Frankie is not, I mean, Frankie is tough. He's hard to beat. He's hard to knock out. Um, he has great wrestling. He has great boxing. Yair has those freaking switch kicks and just, you, you know, like from the 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 Chris Tucker movie and Jackie Chan when it's like <laughs> rush you know, hour. Yeah, exactly. Where it gets which, which one y'all kick me? <laughs> he has that. He has that kind of footwork and those kind of kicks. And his stand up is again. It's Ele- nasty. eleven and one. Eleven and one. I want this is. one yeah. to go the distance, Frank. I, I, this one is. I want this one to be I, the fire of the night. That's this one. I, it, I'm. It, it could be torn because I I love me some Frankie Edgar and oh. I'm going I, – I got to go with the young – look, Yair Rodriguez, he, he has the hype train behind him. Are you, are you on the hype train, Frank? I, I am on the hype train. Wow. Frank, 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 Frank normally doesn't get on hype trains. This no, is, this is very so true. This, this, hey, this is y- – this is yeah. Y- Yair it's is, on the dark for Frank here. Y- y- Yair has been just beating people down. I mean, and look, BJ had no business – did it being in that fight with Yair Rodriguez. The matchmakers for UFC, I know it's not Joe Silva anymore. Whoever is in that position now should be fired for even an old, basically, should have retired five years ago, BJ Penn, against, you know, basically, a, Yair Rodriguez, is he's a killer. And I, I'm going to pick him to win it, though. I, I, I think that he beats Frankie Edgar. All right. Wow. Let's go uh, Damian Maya, Jorge Masvidal. Masvidal. Masvidal, excuse me. Game bred. You've got uh, uh, Damian sitting at twenty four and six. Jorge thirty two and eleven, but Damian's got the he's got the height. He oh, only this, by like two inches though. This is Damian Maya in his last four fights has only been hit thirteen times. So wait 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 stop. It what did he call Floyd up and say hey like what's your defensive strategy it, here? In his last four fights, yes, Damian Maya has been hit thirteen times. He's just been getting. Getting dudes on the ground and choking them out. That's that's what he does. He is probably the best Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner in MMA maybe ever, period. He, if, if this fight goes to the ground, and that's what Damian Maia likes to do, cause, and that's how – if you look at his last few fights, that's all he's done. Everybody knows what he's going to do. He's going to take you down, get your back, and choke you out. But yet, nobody's been able to prevent it. And nobody's been able to stop it. And some of those guys were actually pretty good on the ground, like Carlos Condit. He made Carlos Condit look like a white belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And, like, they didn't even belong in the same ring. So if you're Jorge Ma- Masvidal? Yes. What do you do besides keeping, besides keeping Damian upright? Look, his, Masvidal's ground game is not, it's not terrible. It's not garbage. But it's not nowhere. Like, he's talking like, I'm not afraid to go to the ground with Damian. Yes, you are. You, you, you don't want <laughs> it, any part of that. However, Jorge Masvidal's strategy should be like Robert Whitaker's when he fought Jacare at the last fight night. Robert Whitaker is a real boxer. He's not just an MMA boxer. He is a real boxer. Like, his hands are freaking unbelievable. He used to fight in the Kimbo Slice, backyard brawl, th- that kind of stuff. His, his problem has been with his losses is that he gets a little too hesitant to let his hands fly. But when he lets his hands fly, he, he's going to knock somebody out. And so that's where this is one of those styles make fights. It's the same thing again with the Robert Whitaker Jacare. Ground, ground against pound. Yes, Ro- Robert Whitaker is a real boxer, and Jacare could not take him down because his takedown defense was just that good, and he kept it on the feet and just beat the snot out of him. That's what Masvidal needs to do. He didn't want any part of going to the ground with Damian Maya because I can already tell you how it ends. It ends badly for Jorge Masvidal, but. I kind of like after seeing Robert Whitaker knock out Jacare, who is probably just as good as Damian Maya, you, you know, probably like one and one A as far as the best Brazilian jiu jitsu guys to ever compete in MMA. I think if Mosvidal lets his hands go and is not hesitant, then I think he wins this fight. But he's going to be, he's got to be a little hesitant because of the takedown. 
He does. He's got to watch what Damian does. But Damian is good again at avoiding those shots. But I don't think he's he's not fought anybody with Jorge Masvidal's boxing. And as much as I love me some Damian Maya, I, I this is this is a coin flip. I, I it, it's just basically going to be who can impose their will. If Masvidal can keep it on the feet. He's going to batter Damian Maya. If Damian Maya gets him on the ground, he's going to choke him out. Wow. Well, I mean, I'm, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm as split. I, I, I'll go Maya just, again, by submission. But I, I could flip a coin on that because I, Masvidal's hands are scary, and he can knock out basically anybody. So, basically, he just needs to let him fly. That's let, let, if he lets it fly, he, he's, just, he's going to light Damian Maya up, and it's going to be a short night. All right. Well, let's go to the women. We've got uh, Joanna versus Jessica. Yes. Y- you know I'm bad with last names, so I'm, I, even, I'm not even trying. I understand. Joanna is undefeated. She is. 13-0. and 0. So, I mean, listen. She's these, a killer. These Polish women, boy, they come out. They do not play. She, if you watch some of her fights where I think it was, I want to say uh, Jessica I and some of her defenses, she's just battered and bloodied. I mean, she's a world Muay Thai champion like six times over. So, I mean, her, her striking is ridiculous. Jessica Andrade, her striking is good. This is going to be she's, – she's not going to be afraid to stand up and trade with Joanna like a lot of people had because when they tried it, it's like that's just bad advice, bad strategy, you know. Um, she's Brazilian, so you know she's got a ground game, but she likes to strike. So, I, I, I expect this to be a stand-up fight. And this is one of those Ric Flair's, you know, until Ooh. until the to be the man, you got to beat the man until until Joanna has been beat. I'm not picking against her because she's just she is ridiculous. That was my question to you. Does Joanna get her first loss? But no. Listen. All right. So and, we're gonna and Jessica go. Andrade is probably has maybe more momentum than anybody in that division. Not named Joanna. I mean, she's been on a tear. So. It's not going to be an easy fight. Maybe her, maybe Joanna's toughest fight in the UFC. But look again until I see somebody beat Joanna because she's just she's cold blooded and just is not going to cut any slack. I'm, I'm picking Joanna to win it. Okay, so let's go to the main event then. Rematch. Yeah, Junior Dos Santos. Stipe. 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 I really got the little thing above the E. Well, there was it's not on here. That's just, why I was like, like Miley, Miley Crew. Got it. E. Got it. Got it. So this is the main event, the rematch. <laughs> Frank, what do you I, expect? I mean, Dos Santos beating the, the first time. So unanimous decision. You know, yeah. I mean, so the, he's got uh, he's got that momentum there and that that confidence, knowing that he can do it. And you know, look for Stipe. He's he's got something to prove because you know the last time he fought this guy, it's been a while ago since they fought. But I, I expect. The same, basically, This I think this fight goes to decision. Um, it's going to be straight standing. Stipe likes to stand. Junior Dos Santos likes to stand. It's basically all that they do. I, I actually like Stipe's boxing better because I think it's more uh, more technical. Um, and he's just he has very good demeanor when he's in there. You, you never see him breathing hard. You never see him breathing heavy. He's always calm, even at the stare downs. Like, it doesn't look like there's any jitters at all, just straight faced. Let me go out and do my business. I mean, dude still works as a firefighter. I mean, he's the UFC heavyweight champion, and he's still, they're like, why haven't you quit your job? He's like, that's what I went to school for. He's like, I like being an EMT. And the I, UFC I, doesn't pay that much. Well, yeah, that, that, he's, like, <laughs> he's like, I like being a firefighter, EMT, and yeah, that's why I went to school. But I'm going to pick Stipe to win the fight and, you know, avenge his last loss. But. I mean, Junior Dos Santos he has really good hands, but he's taken some beatings. I mean, the Cain Velasquez fight, his face looks different after that fight. I mean, he just, if you look at some of his earlier pictures of his face and look at his face after he fought Cain Velasquez, which that fight should have been stopped probably two rounds before, he just beat his face like just like a tomato can. His face looks like, uh, reminds me of a Dick Tracy villain yes like clay like uh, putty face yeah yeah, yeah. smushed in and gotcha. like kind of all yeah. rearranged he, he did that, exactly that right. that is a perfect that's what <laughs> kane did to him i think he's taken just too many where's head, roger rabbit too many <laughs> head shots. so i i got stipe to win it all right well that is your ufc breakdown by you know as i call him the factual frank mazze so Gentlemen, a couple news and notes, things I want to hit before we let the great Al Bushman loosen the booth, as I always say. We'll take a break before we do that. You want to take a break? Yeah. All right, so let me a couple news and notes, and then we'll uh, take a break. Really quick, um, 
Oh, you want to take a break now? No, no, no. Do your thing. And oh, we'll okay, okay. News okay. and yeah. notes. Yes. Shoot, brother. So, uh, of course, as we know, Matt Harvey partying a little too long for the New York Mets. The, the drunk night. Instead <laughs> of the dark night, yes, the drunk night. he was the drunk okay. night out till 4 a.m. And then he played golf the next day. That's a true. That is. The drunk night. But, uh, you know, he issued an apology to his team. He's like, listen, I was out on Friday night. It was. I mean, it was when Cinco it, de Mayo. Doesn't so. matter if you have a if you are, have a start the next day. When did he start? S- like six six p.m. on <laughs> on Saturday. If it gets so bad when security is texting you and having to come to your room, yeah. it's a problem. Okay. I don't think he's going to be with the Mets any, much longer, anyway. You don't think so? No. Wow, that's really breaking up that that pitch. Is that the new Doc Gooden or what? Uh, if he starts snorting cocaine, <laughs> which he probably has, but no, I, that, he's, I don't see him going to be with the Mets much longer. Okay, right. he, he hasn't lived up his, to his potential. He's got his injuries and Tommy John surgery. He hasn't. His ERA's TJ a, in the house. His Tommy ERA's John is never good. Right mm-hmm. When you when you got to call TJ, you know it's not a good night. Not a good night no. um, so another, we were talking about this during the break. Um, Draymond Green calling clown Olenek, dirty. Olenek, Olenek. First dirty, of all, fir- <laughs> first of all, the dirtiest player in the game, it, 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 and you me, me and Evan talk. talked about this you beforehand. This. The dirtiest player in the game is Draymond Green, you call and he Draymond. wants to call. So- I don't even care who it is. It could be you, Eric. He wants to call somebody else saying he's a dirty player. I don't care who it is. It, it, it doesn't need to be done. He's the dirtiest player in the game, and he's trying to call somebody else a dirty player. So I, I, I hold nothing to that fire. Nothing. What Not was, even a marshmallow. What was, what was the stat that you brought up? Draymond Green has like 47 texts. 40. 47 texts in three years. <laughs> and almost 400 games with Kelly Olenek, he has four, including college and the pro. Come on now. Move on. Move right along. Okay. You know, All this right. is a non-story story that he wants to make a story. <laughs> Get out of here, Draymond. He's Go born, win your ring. He's born, Actually, don't even win your ring. Let somebody else win your ring. Let Steph, let Clay, let Durant win you a ring. I think Draymond's more because they have so much time off. Um, <laughs> that must be true. One other thing here, and I want to get your gentleman's thoughts on this, and we haven't really talked much about it, but uh, the judge for the Aaron Hernandez judge case. Judge Judy? No. Oh. The Aaron Hernandez case. Oh, okay. Hernandez. Judge forced to vacate Hernandez's 2013 murder conviction. Yeah. Now the Patriots so might he's have innocent. to pay up. The Patriots might have to pay Aaron up. Aaron Hernandez is innocent. Maybe, hey, if, if OJ is innocent, yeah. why not? The fact of the matter is, is, the dude's guilty as can be. Don't, don't get <laughs> he, smacked for that one. He, <laughs> the reason why he did it, he, he knew like the possibility of his you know, his, his kid and whatever else getting paid is, is, is more likely, so that's why he did it. Unfortunate. We'll see what happens with the situation, but, you know. Frank, I got one for you, and then this is the last one. We're going to take a break. Uh, the ex-general manager, Scott McLuhan mm-hmm. of the Redskins, says yes. that the Redskins are, in fact, a great organization, and the split was mutual. Are you buying this? Not a chance. Okay. All right. All right. That's, that, that's what somebody says. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. As, as McClune was saying, his nose got larger and larger. He's just saying that so maybe to get another job, like he doesn't want to, you know, blast them or whatever, but no, not not a chance. He's playing the violin, and yeah. he's playing it well. Were you just trying to strum the war chant? Uh, it was, it was it actually like a violin. It was almost a violin. Yeah, it was a, it was, it was a, I didn't have the tone right, oh. all right? But listen, he's not going to say anything else because exactly what Frank said, he wants to do the right thing so he can progressively get another job in the future, but... Things didn't end well there in Washington for whatever reason. And Scott McLuhan's a good GM. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think he's a great talent evaluator. I, I, I do too. I think yes. he's a great GM. I think yes. he puts people into places to succeed. So it's unfortunate that it didn't work out because the Redskins, you know what? They were trending in the right direction. The fact that he's not there anymore, we're going to see what happens with them. I was a little skeptical. Then they signed Terrell Pryor, and they, they did some other decent things in the offseason. So we'll see what you know. See, we'll see what happens with them. But yeah. – uh, when they said that he was no longer there, I was like, eh, that's not really good for that organization. No. No, they're going to lose week one, so that's all that matters. All right. Oh, let's, here we go. <laughs> let's take a break. When we come back, I'm going to let him loose in the booth to talk about his favorite team in all of Major League Baseball. That is the great Al Bushman talking about his Rays. You are listening to us. Hold on level again. 813-699-5353 is the number. We'll be right back. What's shots going to do? 
<laughs> All right, how much beer did you drink uh, on the golf course? <laughs> I, I mean, not enough, okay? okay. Welcome back to a whole other level right here at Cowork. Craig Cousins. What are you drinking, Cuff? Frank Jose, Great Old Bushman, your man Eric Wilson. Showtime. Showtime. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm letting him loose in the booth to talk about his favorite team in all of Major League Baseball. Not sure what I'm going to hear today, so I have to preface this by saying the thoughts and opinions of the great Al Bushman. They do represent the show. Do not yes, necessarily they do. Yeah, reflect. They represent the show. <laughs> wow. All of us here at home. That's how level. we're doing tonight. Okay. With that, I'm not going to cuss. With that, ladies and gentlemen, great Al Bushman. So what I are, are they going to ask me questions? I, I don't. I hate doing rants without you asking me questions. You know, I, I don't like that either. Eric does it all the time. He's like, "Ladies and gentlemen, I don't see. I don't do that." Cut cussing. I'm like, "Wait, uh, yeah, what's going on here? Do I, I just have to like come off the tongue right I, now?" So okay, let me ask you this. I'll ask thank you a question. You, thank you, Craig. Yes, Damn. the fact that the bullpen continuously gives up runs and and gives up leads. What is basically? The answer, in your opinion, okay, so to what, this situation. So what happened last night wasn't... A, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't, wasn't yeah. a bullpen It wasn't. Ball. But the previous couple of games have been. So this is the easy... Okay, this should have been the, the soft part of their schedule. Okay. Because they played yeah. Miami for you know four games, and then they come back into town playing Miami again, and they're, they're playing the Royals. This, this should be easy. This should be a good buffer zone between, before you have to go off to Cleveland, off to Boston, and then you come back home to play the Yankees, who are now fantastic. Ridiculous. Yeah, so we yeah. call her coming around. Okay. Yes. You're on with whole nother level. Who are we talking to? Yo, tell me I didn't miss the UFC talk. You, uh, you missed it by like five, ten minutes, Zach. <laughs> Maybe 15. Maybe 15 minutes. Son of a gun. <laughs> Whoa, what's up, guys? How's it going? Hey, what's hey, up? It's our, it's our UFC guy, Zach Davis, joining us here on Whole Nother Level. Zach, man, what's going on? What's up? What were you we talking about? Are we talking about cricket or field hockey? I mean, I'm an expert. We're, uh, we're, I was about shuffleboard. To, I was, shuffleboard, actually. I was about to you know, shuffleboard champions. Women's beach volleyball there for a second. So, no. Yo, listen, listen. <laughs> I happen to be a subject matter expert. That's what I majored in college. <laughs> so, no, we were about to go into my Rays rant, but, uh, you know, since you're on the phone, why don't you give us your picks for, for UFC 2, uh, 211? Oh, gosh. Oh, man. Okay, real quick. Yeah, real quick. Let's see. Okay, okay, count me down, Frank. Who am, I, who am I picking first? All right, uh, I, Dustin Poirier and Eddie Alvarez. I have Dustin winning that fight, um, but I, I'm curious to get your thoughts on it. Whew, okay, let's see. Real quick, top of my head, who wins it? Dustin Poirier versus Eddie Alvarez. I say Eddie Alvarez beats Dustin, even though I love Dustin. Um, I just think they're both you know, good boxers, and I think Eddie's going to make it a much dirtier fight possibly uses wrestling uh if that happens i think eddie takes him similar to what frank said actually he's like ground or pound game on that one which he should have done with connor but that didn't quite work out <laughs> uh nope i got uh yair rodriguez and frankie edgar and i got i'm i'm buying the hype train i'm i'm on the yair uh I'm on the Yair bandwagon, but I, I think it's going to be a tough fight because I think Frankie is – I mean, he's hard to knock out, and his boxing is good. But Yair with them kicks and his hands, I, I'm, I'm buying the hype. Uh-huh. Last we talked, I picked Frankie. I'm going to change it. I think Yair Rodriguez is going to win. The kid's too young, too explosive, coming off some big wins, uh, one over BJ Penn like we discussed earlier. Uh, I, think, I think Frankie's on his way, on his way out. Um, he's still a great fighter. He's got some great skill, but I, I, think, uh, I think Yair's going to beat him. All next, right. next up, Frank, uh, Zach, my, uh, Damian Maya. Yeah, this is my flip of the coin Eric, match. Eric, uh, let Frank do the names. Okay, fine. Sorry. <laughs> the, the, this was my flip of the coin. I I could go either way on this because Jorge Masvidal's boxing is ridiculous, and if he can somehow keep it off the ground, I I, I think he's going to batter him, kind of like what Robert Whitaker did to Jacare. <laughs> Um, I, I can't, I, I picked Damian Maya, but I, I don't feel good about it. And I'm, it, it scares me because again, Masvidal is a real boxer. I, I just think, you know, again, everybody knows what Damian's going to do. He's going to try and get it to the ground and choke him out. Um, I, I'm going with that, but I, I like Masvidal. I think that, I, I think that his losses are basically that he's just held back too much. If he goes in there and just lets his hands go. Um, I, I think he's going to batter Maya, but I'm I'm rolling with Maya by submission. Oh, man, another tough one. Like, yeah, I think I, I wouldn't even hesitate. Like, normally I would just say Damian wins. But 
like you said, that Whitaker's Jacare fight kind of, you know, it makes Shut you question. You. Like, so with that being said, I'm going to go with Jorge Masvidal with the win by decision. Yeah, right. that's I, I was uh, I was torn on that one. Uh, Joanna and Jessica Andrade. Um, I, I look, I like Jessica I, on Andrade. I, I think this is going to be a very tough fight for Joanna because she has hands too. But I, I said until I see somebody beat Joanna, I, I can't pick against her because I, I just I think she's nasty. So I I got Joanna and Jacek winning that fight. <laughs> Yeah, look for a fight of the night honors on this one. Um, these two girls are just going to get in there and they're going to brawl. Go at it. Joanna yep. Jacek, she, she, no one can beat her. She's unbeatable. And until I see someone beat her, I'm going to keep picking her. That's yep. um, Joanna. But, you know, but then Andrade, I mean, man, that girl can throw hands. She's not afraid to get in the pocket and just bang no. it out. Yep. But I, I think it's a great fight. I think it wins fight of the night honors. But I think Joanna wins. Yep, yep. And the main event, uh, I have Stipe Ooh. over JDS avenging his previous loss. I, I think it's going to be a stand-up fight because I don't think either one of these guys want to go to the ground. They're just going to basically, I think it goes probably to a decision. But I, I like Stipe. I think he's getting better. And I, I think Junior Dos Santos has just been, he's taken too many beatings, I think, especially the Cain Velasquez one, um, which kind of makes his face look different. All right. Eric? Eric, I need you to quote me on this one. Okay, Zach, got gotcha. you. Stipe, Stipe is going to get knocked out in the second round. Stipe is going to get knocked. Okay, knocked out second round. Zach Davis, set it here yep. first, whole nother level. Junior Dos Santos, take him down. Talk to you later, guys. All right, man. Thanks, Zach. He wanted to get off the phone quick because Frank picked against that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I was like, so, so they're like butting heads right now. Like, I'm sitting yeah, here another like, phone you know, we got another phone call on the – maybe UFC. We'll see what happens. All right. You're on with Hold On Level. Who are we talking to? Hello? 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 I think Zach may accidentally dial this again. No, it's a different number. Oh, it was. Yeah, he won three number. Well, they're, they're, they're listening regardless. They'll call back. You know what I'm saying? So, so they're button heads on that on that main event there, but – We'll see what happens. I mean, I I, I kind of think what Frank, you know, Jose De Santos, his face doesn't look the same, <laughs> it's pretty, but pretty, it might pretty, look different pretty, pretty, once junior. he pumbles someone else's face. Junior, junior, junior De Santos. Ah, not. sorry, yeah, Junior. Junior. So I, I always say Jose. Just say JD. I know, I know Jose Junior. So like that's it just flows. Just say. Were you drinking Jose today? No, I wasn't actually. <laughs> That would have been eh, oh. actually it would not have been great on the. <laughs> it was too hot out to do that unless it was really chilled with some salt and a lime maybe. Oh. What, but that didn't happen. What, what did, what did you I kept it really PG. Don't, don't, don't remember, speak about allegedly. I kept it really PG. Allegedly. I've remember, been actually really keeping me a PG lately. Do you remember what you had Cinco de Mayo? You had a you had a really nice tequila Cinco de Mayo. Remember yeah, what it, what it, what it yeah, was? Skull and crossbones on the bottle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whenever it has a skull and crossbones on the bottle, I don't really think it's like a, I'm keeping a PG at that point. Yeah. I'm just like looking at it and be like, that that's death. And uh, <laughs> it's probably going to be in me soon, so I'm dead, basically. And that's kind of what happened on Cinco de Mayo. Nah. You know, not for nothing. But, you know, I was I was doing a little two-step dance on uh, the Gator Club. I haven't been there in about five years. So, you know, it is what it is. He, he can still hold his own, so. The floor was shaking up there, though. Well, it <laughs> it was a little weird. It, I haven't been there in a while. It kind of freaked me out for a second. You know, you step on it, and when you go from the bar into the dance floor, what they call the dance floor area, yeah, like I it, think it's gonna break through at some, at some point. It, it it moves, it really does. It's like it's it's a, it is a little shaky at times, but anyhow, Greg L. Bushman. Yeah. All right, so Craig, you were about to ask him <laughs> since it wasn't I did the, ask him actually. You did. It wasn't yes. the bullpen's <laughs> fault last night. All right, so but what happened? This should be the soft. Wait, I, I just already said this. Should be the soft part of their season. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put out a stat. I want you to guess what it is. Okay. 187. It's not a not murder death kill. It's not murder. Damn, no. I was about to say juvenile. One, it's an average. Okay. 187. What is 187? Batting average. Exactly. Boom. Who's put up in the air? Who's, hey. who's batting? Oh wait, average? no. Oh, different. Who's different, who's different batting show. average is is 187? Evan Longoria. Um, no. Okay. That's the entire uh, Royals batting lineup. They've been batting combined. Ooh. Wow. For the past 13 games. KC. 187. KC. And they're two wow. and eleven on the road. Before they came in the and table they beat last the race. night, how many? Guess how many uh, runs they've scored in the last three games? Last three games. Last three games. How they many scored runs? Four. Wow, good job, buddy. Four. Four. He did his research. The Royals have scored four runs in the last three games before they came in the table. Okay. Okay. So this should have been a cakewalk. Yeah. More yeah. You would think it at least be competitive. Yes. So the the problem was last night Snell, who can't get it done again, and he can't even last six innings. Snell smelt. 
Four runs yeah. over ten, uh, four runs over uh, ten hits in five innings. He failed to get into the sixth inning for the tenth tenth out of the eleven eleven games. Had four errors last night. Two by their catcher, one by their Gold Glove center fielder, and Brad Mill. You can't have can't have errors. Four hours. Yeah, the, no. the most they've had since two thousand and sixteen. One's acceptable. Four is ridiculous. So uh, once again, they batting the you know no 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 bats whatsoever. They lead the league in strikeouts, 330Ks, leads the league in the majors. Last night, they had nine players left on base. Twice they had bases loaded, once with one outs, once with zero outs, still couldn't get a run. And then just the wheels come off when, when I, I don't understand this team has an, like an, an opportunity to be above 500. They play shitty teams, but they can't get it done. I don't, it, it's time, and I've said this before, to make shakeups. And rotations, you need to send Blake Snell down. You need to do something. Now, they already did one today. Pruitt is now back down the minors. Are you happy? I am happy. Okay. I'm a, I, he was kind of getting my attention, but then he started fucking up again. All I right. cussed. You said you weren't going to. Damn it. We don't do that on this show. Yeah, Come on, do. man. Yeah, we do. I, I, I just don't <laughs> understand. They had 16 Ks last night. 16. Which is ridiculous. You should. Yeah. Yeah. 16 absolutely. Ks. Did, you know how they put the Ks? You know, the fans put the Ks down. They don't 16 do that. of those? That's a lot of Ks. They don't do that at the drop. I don't know why. But they should. This was a problem from last year. They it was. They, they led the li- they they led the majors last year in strikeouts, I believe. So I mean, it's kind of like carried. I mean, nothing's basically nothing. Nothing's yeah, it's, changed. it's pretty much carried over from 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 last year. And what I I don't understand is how. And I'm, I'm going after the manager, Kevin Cash, and I normally don't go after Kevin Cash. Is his nonchalant attitude when it comes to post game press conferences? Oh, yeah, it's just okay. You know, we're not gonna you're not gonna you know blow the the lid off yet. I want to see a Lou Pinella like blow up. I want to see something in the locker room where he's flipping over tables. But and this early in the season, <laughs> yes, I would. I don't get. It's, we're what, second, first week in May, or second week in May. You need to put something, need a light of fire to this team because and I said this before. To be competitive in this in this division, you have to do. You have to be good, and they're not look as a almost five hundred team. They're not looking like that. They should be where Toronto's at, who's trending up while the Rays are trending down. Is. Is this the time where like Joe Madden would have brought in like a magician or yes. a juggling clown? He probably or a would have brought in the snake, or something, to... or dressed them up in the in the weird suits. So I I don't. They need to send Blake Snell down to the minors. He's ineffective. He's the weakest link in that whole pitching rotation. They need to to do something with him and maybe put him down for a couple of starts to get his head right. And I know you're going to ask me who are they going to bring up. Well, that's the, that's the tough thing. You could bring Erasmo from the bullpen to be that number five guy, but then you lose somebody in the bullpen. They don't really have a lot of bullpen help right now, so what do you do? That's the big question. And I think they're they're bleeding at the seams right now when it comes to help because they have none. All right, so. <coughs> We're going over time. I don't care. No, no. We can go over time. We're going over time. No, no, no. I have a question to ask you now. Yes. Because I just had it. I had to let you get that out of your system. <coughs> you are now sitting. I watched the game last night. I had to turn it off after the fourth. That's how bad it was. When you when your leadoff guy hits a triple and you can't you load the bases and you can't get it done, you can't get one run in. Come on. Lay down a bunt. Do something. Three strikeouts in a row. Three strikeouts in a row. Now I understand it's the bottom of the lineup, but three? Three? I got you. So my question now to you is you are in the office of the general manager Kevin Cash. It's just you and him. And he is giving you the opportunity, not only as a fan, but also as media, to have a off-the-record conversation with this man. And no one else is going to hear this conversation but you and him. Because he sees that there is a problem, but he's not exactly sure how to work it. What do you say to him? I say take a risk and shake it up, man. You got to give him a solution. Shake it up. Make a managerial decision. Shake it up. Do something. What is that solution? He's got to figure that out. He's the manager. Okay. But you as a fan, you who has followed this team since its inception, this is your team. You have this opportunity to speak to him and tell him, this is what I feel you need to do. And in doing so, he is going to take what you say under serious consideration. I got I got the answer. Get Joe Boo from the, from the, from the movie Major League. Get a bucket of fried chicken and then sacrifice it. That, Everybody that, loves some fried chicken. The, the little shot, too. The, yeah, the, yeah. the rum. The rum. The, don't don't yep, forget the yep. – yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Bartender. Joe Boo needs a refill. Something. I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's troubling because as a fan looking in, it's just like, God, this team's terrible, man. It's, they're, they're terrible. 
with a capital they, C. They definitely have some ups and downs in the on the, on the season. Craig, it's know. more it's more downs than ups. I know it is. Well, I know I it can't, is. I can't Only because I'm reading your tweets every night because I've been interested <laughs> in seeing Chris Sale seventy three strikeouts on the season. The next best in the AL is fifty. I, Twenty three strikeouts better than anybody else on the season. Just bowling. I've had I've had and a few, David Price hasn't I've gotten had a back. Few, a few people tweet me out. They're like, "Well, what's the solution?" It's like, "Well, look, no, well, hold on a second. It's time to say what's the solution. They they need to know what the solution is by now. It's they're like, "Oh, fire Cash. Is it really fire him? Is the the solution? He has to work with what he has to get. They traded off all their farm guys trying to get big, like trying to get combinations. Guys come in to fill slots. Their farm system isn't what it used to be. So, the solution is." Play better. Play better. Play yeah. fundamental baseball. They're not playing mm-hmm. fundamental. That one that went through Kevin Kevin Kiermaier's legs last night. Come on, man. That, come that, on. That's Mike. fundamentals. Yeah. Like it you're is. you're it a is. you're a two time gold. You got to make that. You got to make that play. You just yeah. got your contract. You're two uh, two. And, and like you said, there's four errors. Okay. That's inexcusable. One of them okay because errors happen. Two of them okay maybe four. Now you're just being. And two of them are now from you're just being two reckless. Two of them from your catcher. Yeah. Now you're just being reckless. Two of them are from your so catcher. You can't have that. Can't have that. Well, you got Chris Young on the mound starting in about seven. I'm minutes. glad they're starting Sucre tonight at behind the backstop because I can't handle more of Derek Norris. I can't do it. And all I know is, is I'm going to just say this Terrible. because you know he has his ray on the Rays and everybody knows him a Red Sox Somebody fan. And Chris shot. Sale, no, Chris Sale is playing amazing. He's three and two, but he should be five and zero. Oh. The run support that he's gotten in a couple of games is ridiculous. He has 73 strikeouts. The next best person in the AL has 50. He's 23 strikeouts. Strikeouts. Not just pitch strikeouts up on any other AL pitcher in the league. Jackie Bradley Jr. has been injured. Obviously, you know we haven't had David Price at all. I think all. the Sox are going to make a move at the trade deadline. They're going to make a move. To get a big bat. And also, once we get Price back, once we get J- uh, Jackie Bradley Jr. back, we're going to be good. Price we're going to be really gonna, good. Uh, and we're hovering above 500. We're 17 and Price 14. Price is going to go uh, get Tommy John surgery. So, if I you're... If you're Kevin Cash, what do you say to Matt Andres tonight as he walks out onto the... You don't have to say nothing. You know why? He's been lights out. You don't say nothing to Matt Andres. Right. You let him pitch. He's been lights out his, fast. I think, past three starts. So, you don't say nothing to him. Okay. Hey, the Yankees, though? Wow. Can you believe it? They keep doing it over and over and over again. And yeah. I've said it. I, I've come on the show and said it before. Like, I think they're overachieving. But, man, are they overachieving. They're overachieving... Man, are they overachieving? Are you kidding me? What's that rookie's name? What they call the judge? Aaron was Judge. Aaron, I think it's Aaron Judge. Aaron, Seriously, Aaron I judge. mean, they're coming yeah. back from like they're down ten nothing. They're coming back. I mean, they're closing. T- I mean, they. I think they swept the. They, they took so, the broomsticks out on the Cubs. I think they took two, out of didn't they? Or two and a three. Two, two out of three. Of two out of three innings on Sunday night. Oh, I know, I know. It's been ridiculous. I mean, the Yankees, this squad that they're putting out there, it, they're not household names, but they're getting it done. I think they have either the first or second best record. Question, in the, the major question leagues. is, how long they can they keep it up though? I this said, is, uh, I this, said we're they not won't. Even point. I said they won't, but they're proving me wrong every night. So this is crazy. They got the what second best record in the league besides Washington and, and Baltimore. Da, I don't believe na, so. Na, 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 na. This is the hole they got from Aroldis Chapman yep. and the Cubs and Andrew Miller to Cleveland. Yep. They got a, a whole lot of, of <laughs> Cleveland's top prospects too. So th- these are all guys that would have been well helping out in Cleveland and Chicago basically. The Yankees right now sitting at 21 and 9. Astros are 21 and 11. I, I, I oh, they're really, going to take that division. I really feel that the Yankees right now. I, I would, and this is this pains. They me, have the best record. They, they're this, 21 and nine. This pains me to say it. They're they're the best team in baseball right now. They are. They really are. <sighs> Wow, I got it from a Rays fan Ugh. and a Boston fan all in the same They're playing, joke. They're I, playing like it. If, 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 honestly, this would be a really attractive series if either the Cubs and the Yankees go out in the World Series or the Nationals and the Yankees go out in the World Series. I mean, it's way too, way, way, too way, way, way too early, too early for that, me to yeah. talk about that. But right as of right now, They're on this playing, day, May yeah. was the 8th, 9th? 9th. Exactly. They are... They're playing the best baseball. And Dwayne's not here to hear it. Dwayne ain't never here. So, like, you know what I'm saying? Dwayne, get get your butt in the studio. Who's here Saturday? Talk about your Yankees. Talk about your Giants. And talk about ABC News. better be there on the 19th and 20th if we're going to do a show on the 19th. We'll we'll make sure that Dwayne, you know. I get one of them shows. He'll he'll probably be there for the 20th. He probably won't be there for the 19th. I tell him about the new intern that's coming in. He'll probably come. This is true. This is is very true. (laughs) But, hey, we have his keys still from that one day. (laughs) Oh, yeah, that's right. We do. Oh, no. Dwayne, the dis- he, he pulled a David Copperfield. No <laughs> keys, but he was gone for three hours. <laughs> <laughs> Came back. Oh, hey, guys. Great show. How was oh, the show? It was great. There he is. I found my keys. It was great. Yeah, here my we go. keys are right, right there. <laughs> 
the whole time. Unbelievable. Gentlemen, this has been awesome as always. Um, listen, this Saturday, ladies and gentlemen, Celebrity Flag Football Tournament going on at the Lakewood Ranch Out of Door Academy, Academy excuse me, ODA. Whole Not Level is going to be there. We're doing interviews. We're going to be doing – we're going to do a live broadcast. There's a lot going on out there that right, day. Wait, hold on. Are you going to do your 40-yard dash? Whoa. I have, to, I have to do it against somebody or I just want to time me. Uh, are, are you practicing there? I have – yeah, I'm so out of shape. I'll race him. You know what? You know, screw it. I'll race you too. It's been a. It's, I, I'm not gonna lie. I have not I, practiced. I'll probably get anything. smoked, but yeah, me too. Actually. Oh, you know, what? I'll probably, I mean, it's time. Yeah, I'll time you then. I know that's no, the worst. No, Frank's thing. timing. I see. Original. Oh wait, wait. What is this like? Okay, hold on. All of a sudden, it came from. Is anybody gonna challenge me to Frank's timing? No, no, like, no, no. You guys had this thing planned. Like, no. like Frank's been timing you for the past week or no, no, no. more, more well, than that, we, like three months. Time out. When we originally set to do okay. this, we still right. getting together tomorrow to, for our, yeah, we like, are. I'll call you tomorrow. When we originally, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> when we originally set this up, I said we should do a 40-yard dash. Craig, Evan, and Dwayne, and then Frank and Kristen can I, can at I the time. A, can I get a running start? They were going to be the <laughs> ones be running, to time and it, it'll us be started. to make sure that you know there was no discrepancies or anything like that. So that was the original plan. So we'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll find a way to make it work on Saturday. This is going on Saturday. Yeah. Oh, wow. Saturday. Okay. What's up with Dwayne? Is he gonna? Ra- I, I don't mean, know. What there was a rumor that he like had the most stolen bases in high school. This guy. Yeah, but he's also getting old too. Touche. <laughs> Age ain't nothing but a number. Touche. Oh, now here comes Eric. That's been training for months. So, <laughs> so is our yeah. friend. You notice the last time we talked about this, I said everybody trained. And then I didn't hear anything about it, so <laughs> actually nobody trained. But I think Eric actually trained. I will say so this. Like, he's he, been actually training w- for the past two, three months, and nobody else did. I will say this. He has cut down on the fries. I have. He has oh. cut down on the fries. Look at you, you <laughs> sandbagging. <laughs> 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 he's trying to win his money back, I, I this think, guy. I think he is. We're not, you know, but, but we're not betting any money. That's not until football season. Okay. Yeah, this was no, bragging no, no, no. rights. That's it's, all it, it was. Is. I know. This was strictly Trust bragging rights. Whoever me. has the fastest time, 40-yard dash, gets bragging rights. That's it. All right. That's all it is. I don't even know if I can like run if to my car If I pull a groin right muscle or a hammy, I'm going to be pissed. I don't even know if I can run to my car Listen, right if now. you guys don't want – we don't have to do this. No, we're, we have to at this point. Well, we can wait. Because, okay. I mean – We can wait you know, we'll and, figure it out and, and set it up another time. We'll I mean, you know, We have to yeah. do it at least before football season. Well, you know what we could do is before for our we're NFL pre, preseason show, yeah, we could do that. We could do that. Okay. We could do that. Give that everybody – It gives us time to The old school parking lot? Yeah. Do you imagine we you, put up lines in the back? Actually, it could work. It could actually work. I, I don't know yeah. if that's forty yards, but yeah, I mean, you no, know. we get in the in the back, the back of the parking lot. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Right there, there's nothing there. Yeah, right? that's true. Right. I mean, just don't eat it because then there'll be cement. Yeah. But it'd right, be great footage though. That'd be you awesome. Would. <laughs> <laughs> we'd have we to, might we'd even have be able to get Carl to run it for you. He'd be like Rich Eisen. He would probably beat it. He'd be like, no, Carl would be like Rich Eisen though. You know, he has to wear the suit. So we have to make him run in a suit then. He has to wear the suit. Everybody has to wear a suit. So he, w- <laughs> everybody has to wear a suit. No, no. <laughs> ain't wearing no suit. It's only Rich that runs the suit. <laughs> only Rich. And then, and then they do the, you know the slow cam against them. Okay. All right. <laughs> so Saturday we are going to be there, Lakewood Ranch. Out we're going to be Academy. there. We might or might not run a forty, but we're going to be there. We'll definitely be there. We're going to give. We're going to do some interviews. We got a, a live show, of course, as always. Only Lever is going to be on the field in the building doing it all. So um, you know I, we have to, as Craig says now, the best damn sports show in Florida. Florida FL baby. We're going to have to get it done. So for the absentee, Dwayne Lindo, Hollywood, Scribbles, whatever we want to call him this week to next, Craig Cousin, Frank Mazze, the great Al Bushman, your man, Eric Wilson. Until then, we have taken you to a whole nother level, and we'll see you next time. Chief, mate, what do you want to do tonight? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. 